Before this video starts, I just wanted to take a few moments to acknowledge the passing of the Warriors assistant coach, Dejan Milojevic. This is a tragedy for his family, the team, and those within his immediate circle from day to day. This is a huge blow to the Warriors franchise, and my hope is that everyone is able to recover and find peace. He was a huge asset to the franchise, not only for the skills he brought to impart upon the players, but also who he was as a person. May his soul rest in peace. Trade deadline rumors continue to engulf the Golden State Warriors. One of the latest rumors has the Warriors trading Andrew Wiggins to the Indiana Pacers. Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Swish Culture. The Pacers are a young team with one of the highest offensive ratings this season, but they don't exactly scream championship contender. This is important because the Warriors are looking for win-now pieces with a short window, and outside of Miles Turner, there aren't really many players that the Warriors could... Wait, the Pacers have Turner? The Pacers have Turner! So this actually becomes a very interesting trade. One of the Warriors' weaknesses or desires has been a stretch five that can protect the paint. That means Turner could be a rather pivotal piece to Golden State turning the corner. After falling 118 to 115 to an injured Blazers team without Inferni Simons or Shaden Sharp in Siakam's debut, they might just have to shake things up again by the deadline. Today's video will discuss the Warriors likely decision to move on from Andrew Wiggins, where he could end up and what the team could get for him. If that interests you, be sure to like the video and subscribe to Swish Culture for the most analytical and entertaining NBA content on the planet. So without further delay, let's get to it. When the Warriors first got Andrew Wiggins, Nick Wright went on ESPN and trashed the trade, calling it one of the worst things that could have happened to Steph Curry's career. Andrew Wiggins was labeled a bust and with the possibility of Steph Curry going to an NBA Finals brought to absolute zero, I would have expected Nick Wright to concede defeat and proclaim Steph Curry the GOAT. Wiggins is a bad basketball player. He's owed $95 million over the next three years, starting next year. It's unspeakable they did this. It's over for them now. We will never see Steph in another NBA Finals, ever. That obviously didn't happen, but what did happen should be giving Nick Wright whiplash. Wiggins went from bust to number two on a contender back to being, well, what everyone thought Wiggins was in the first place. But is what everyone said about Wiggins true and what's really going on with Wiggins to warrant the Warriors trading him? Let's follow a timeline of events here. So Wiggins came to Golden State after the Warriors traded D'Lo to the Timberwolves. The Warriors had acquired D'Lo as a sign and trade deal when they sent Kevin Durant to the Brooklyn Nets, a deal that also netted the Warriors the Timberwolves first round pick in 2021 which they turned into Jonathan Kaminga. So Wiggins came in the aftermath of KD. The team was in shambles. This was a mid-season trade. Clay is out for the year, Steph is out for the year, and things don't look good. The Warriors were gonna have to tank and see what they can get out of the draft. With the second overall pick, they selected James Wiseman, the final piece to the puzzle, they thought. With Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, and Wiseman, the dynasty could see a resurgence and the Warriors could make a real run for at least a few more championships. Unfortunately, that just wasn't meant to be. The only season that the Warriors were truly competitive was 2022. Despite winning the championship, that was the year that started the ups and downs for Golden State. Everything was fine for Wiggins, but certain states had mandatory vaccinations to remain employed in that state and California being one of them required that Wiggins be vaccinated to remain a part of Golden State or forfeit playing. While Wiggins was happy about winning the championship, he regretted getting that vaccination and felt he was under immense pressure from the franchise to get vaxxed. This was issue number one. Following the championship, Draymond created a PR nightmare when he attacked Jordan Poole, who was really close with Wiggins at the time. The front office didn't even manage to give Draymond a slap on the wrist, and what was once an atmosphere filled with immense pressure on the former number one overall pick now also became toxic. A toxic environment mostly for the young players who, due to having skimpy resumes compared to the big three, have no voice in the locker room. 
Wiggins, having been added to the roster around the same time as Poole, likely saw himself more aligned with the younger players, even an outsider if you will. The division between Curry, Clay, Dre, and the expectations of the young players drove a wedge deep within the group. They started the 2022-2023 season, and riding the high of just re-signing his contract, Wiggins played well. But shortly after, he incurred an adductor injury early December, something which took him out for a little over three weeks. When he was due for return, however, he fell ill due to a non-COVID related sickness. Now you could take that verbatim as something non-related to COVID, or you could try to figure out how a person like Wiggins would view this sequence of events. He's mostly been a very reliable player, and within months of getting a COVID vaccine, despite being in his prime, he's more injured than he had ever been in his career. In 2023 alone, outside of his personal time away, he's been out with injury or illness seven times. Call him the glass man. Despite this, He's still more reliable than a safe light glass warranty. If you recently used safe light and expect them to repair your windshield with their nationwide warranty they sell you on, just know this. Andrew Wiggins has been more reliable for the Warriors this season than safe light will be when it comes to replacing your windshield under their lifetime warranty. He comes back from the illness and Wiggins was just not the same person. He then took some personal time off from the team while keeping in regular contact with the teammates. I made a video that Wiggins' basketball career was likely over as this move was unprecedented and for the length of time he took off, it didn't seem to me that Wiggins wanted to play basketball anymore, much less for the Warriors. He'd already reached the pinnacle by becoming an all-star as well as an NBA champion, which exceeded the goal he set for himself prior to entering the league. That goal was simply to achieve more than his dad, whom we all know now was facing an illness, which is why Wiggins took the time to be with his family. It's safe to say, all of this has taken a toll on Wiggins, and with averages of less than 12 points, 4 rebounds, and 1.3 assists in 26 minutes, almost a 50% reduction in performance, it's hard to picture the Warriors' hardships without Wiggins being at the forefront. That being said, I've discussed these issues in other videos, so please check out some of my latest videos for more on the team issues. All this being considered, the Warriors decided to put Wiggins on the trade block as the team is no longer confident it can get from Wiggins what they expected when they signed him. The rumors have linked a Wiggins trade with the Indiana Pacers. I keep hearing Andrew Wiggins' name there. Shout out anyone who wants to take that and put that on social media. like. I think Jonathan Kaminga was also, I mean, I know Jonathan Kaminga was also another Warriors player that the Pacers have been keeping tabs on and calling Golden State about dating back to the last draft. So those are two potential options. I mean, we've talked about Pascal. So what do the Pacers want with Wiggins? It's not so much Wiggins, but what they could get if they take on Wiggins' contract, namely Jonathan Kaminga. The Pacers have been asking about Kaminga for at least a year and are likely looking to put him in their starting lineup alongside Tyrese Halliburton. The Pacers are missing a dominant wing that can get into the paint and score as well as guard the opposing team's best player. The Pacers have struggled defensively and if they can get these guys to buy in and give the effort necessary, they could make some noise in the playoffs. So what could interest the Warriors in a Pacers trade? Nothing less than Miles Turner. In this simulation, the Warriors receive Turner, Buddy Heald, and a second round pick while the Warriors give up Wiggins, Kaminga, Kevon Looney, and Corey Joseph. Of course, this is reliant on Chris Paul coming back from injury, otherwise the Warriors could be stuck with a shortage of ball handlers. What I like about this trade is that you could also combine it with the Hawks trade in the prior video and the Warriors could start with a lineup of Curry, Murray, Clay, Green, and Turner. They would have to stagger Murray's minutes to get him on the second unit to facilitate. There's no sense in keeping both TJD and Capella. That brings a new player onto the court. The Toronto Raptors have recently parted ways with OG and Siakam and are going into a bit of a rebuild. Schroeder initially signed with the team due to the starting role, but with this rebuild and him being pushed to the bench, it's safe to say he's not happy with it. He could come to the Warriors and facilitate for the second unit that would give him much more exposure and a bigger shot at a salary next season. He's currently on a 13 million a year contract, so if the Warriors sent the Raptors Capella, they could pick up Schroeder, Otto Porter Jr. and Kem Birch. This gives the Warriors a bench of Schroeder, Pods, JP2, Otto Porter Jr. and TJD. 
these guys can all provide quality minutes on the floor and give the current timeline the best shot at winning a championship. Since the Warriors need to have at least 14 spots on the roster, the next four will be filled by Saric, Kem Birch, and Santos, who are currently still on the roster, and the team could pick up JTA, who was just placed on waivers. If the Warriors want to throw their entire support behind Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green, this is easily a better supporting cast than 2022. If ever there was a championship or bust, this is what the Warriors would need in order to go for broke. If this team fails to win a championship, the front office would have to do the unthinkable and start over. Alternatively, the latest rumor has Golden State making yet another trade with Washington. Don't get your hopes up, this isn't for Jordan Poole. The rumor has the Warriors trading Andrew Wiggins for Kyle Kuzma. Kuzma, as you might know, was drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers where he was known for being a spark off the bench that can give you an easy 20 on any given night. His major flaw was his lack of consistency and his lackadaisical approach to defense. He was traded to the Wizards a couple of years ago where he's been placed in a starting role, but much like the average citizen's vote, hasn't had much luck getting anywhere in Washington. At a full 6 foot 9, the 28 year old is averaging 22 points on 46% from the field while shooting 35% from 3. He also averages 6 rebounds and 4 assists per game, all in 31 minutes. While this isn't exactly a championship contending move, it does spark the Warriors offense, something the team has struggled to find outside of Stephen Curry. The Warriors would more likely rely on his ability to space the floor and get downhill in transition. It's possible the team starts him at the small forward position between Clay and Draymond Green, but that would put even more defensive pressure on Draymond, especially without the team having a point of attack defender. This also improves the team's size, pushing Clay back to guarding the two. With Kevon Looney likely retaining the starting role at the five in that scenario, it would be somewhat of a consolation move. But considering the team hasn't been getting a whole lot from Wiggins, it might quiet down the noise in the fan base for the front office to show they're at least making an effort. On the other side of the coin, Wiggins would be able to play with Poole in Washington, and we might even see how much of an impact the two will have playing with each other. Both could end up playing much better than they did at the start of the season. If Wiggins turns it around and plays like 2022 Wiggins, the Wizards easily win that trade. The reports do say that the Wizards are willing to be facilitators, so Wiggins might end up moving on from Washington and end up with the Dallas Mavericks. He's one of the players the Mavs are gunning for, and while the Warriors would love to make a pass at Derek Lively II, the Mavs aren't exactly willing to part with their rookie center, although Tim Hardaway Jr. is available and could slide into the small forward spot. The Warriors would likely have him come off the bench and start Jonathan Kaminga instead, unless Steve Kerr has something to say about it. Hardaway Jr. is averaging 18 points in 30 minutes while shooting 36% from deep and 42% from the floor. Both he and Kuzma would give the Warriors more than Wiggins offensively. Defensively, the team hasn't gotten much from Wiggins this season as he's just riding on reputation right now, so this would also improve. However, it wouldn't be better than 2022 Wiggins. That anomaly has pretty much vacated the premises. Let me know what you guys think of these trade options. Do you prefer either trade or would you rather keep Wiggins? Post your thoughts in the comments below. But before that, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish.